I think we're recording. Fans, welcome to Sports Chat. Yes, yes. There's been a lot to talk about this week. Um, of course, the weather has played a role in sports this week as several games were rained out. But um, some big news, the baseball team is still rolling strong. Um, they split with Central, who's traditionally an Oxford power. Central's always been a good team ever since back in the days of Hamilton and before. So anything you do no matter with them is good. Um, they beat Cleveland County this week. Uh, the Bulldogs off to a slow start, but I mean it's still you know, it's a good build up to district play for them. In baseball, any team can beat any other team on a given day. It's just important how well you pitch. Um, the tennis team, really they had a good showing against Cleveland County the other day. Now they go to win, I think, in the both boys and girls side of the matches. Softball team. They failed they they failed to Oak Ridge. They failed to Jellico. The J V team beat Jellico. It was a, both of shootout games. Some of the varsity players played on the junior varsity team. Jordan Doherty played on the varsity or plays on the varsity, played on the junior varsity against Jellico. And I think she went four for four or something along those. Of course, Jordan's a sophomore. She's she's just now finding her batting it comfort, comfort zone. In the high school level, because it's a big difference. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, that fast pitch softball is really hard to hit anyway. You know, they do, they, do, they, do, they score 14 runs against Jellico the varsity did. Maybe I agree. Eight more four for four. I'm not entirely convinced they didn't score more any more than 14 runs all season last year. Uh, yeah, they had the big game against Cumberland Gap last year. Where they, I think they scored around 12, but they, they struggled to score at times last year. You know, their score, that, that up bridge game was a close game, and it was 6 to 4, and there was a big thunderstorm delay. Lasted about 30, 45 minutes, and when they came back, Oak Ridge had a big rally and put about eight runs on the board. Um, also this week, uh, Nick Litton, Tyler Chapman, son of Alice Lloyd University. They'll also be joined by a kid from Jellico, so it's going to be a very Campbell County flavored team at Alice Lloyd. Uh, you know, it's just what we've said for um, you know the last year. If you play sports in high school, you're probably going to get a scholarship from somewhere. Because I still expect. Um, I was talking to some coaches. Tuffy Shoup is very likely going to be playing at Maryville College next year. You know, Maryville's traditionally good programming, kind of down on their luck, having new coaching staff. And I know that uh, the Price Twins have been in contact with them about Tuffy. Also about Anthony Brown. Yeah, they, you know, they have the connections with Maryville. That's where they played, went to school. So I expect that you'll see quite a few Campbell County players heading in that direction in the future. Of course, um, Shayla Goins is very likely to throw somewhere in college. She's had some good meets so far. She's she's throwing she's throwing good enough to contend for the actual state title this year. Based on how well she throws, and based on the fact that Caitlin Brumman, who threw in similar fashion for Anderson County last year, got a pretty high level scholarship at Tuffy College of Charleston. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I expect Shayla to get some pretty high level offers at some point. I um, mean, you know, I, I talked to Caitlin over Christmas. She's really liking throwing on the college level. They say they've been working with her, changing her throwing style. But, you know, that's probably a better road to go. Well, you know, so I'm sure those coaches know what they're doing. By the time she's probably a junior and senior, she'll be doing really well. Of course, um, in other news, UT is no longer in the NIT. Uh, it was a really bad loss to Middle Tennessee. Uh, no other way to describe it. When you don't score for the last eight minutes of a game at home and give up a 15 to 0 run to close the game, there's something wrong. Right. Um, I want to be positive about Martin, but not really liking what he's done so far with that. The biggest thing about him is some of his questionable recruiting decisions. I mean, Jar Jarnell Stokes, of course, is a great player that would play for anybody in the country. But he's really a Pearl recruit. I mean, Pearl had him pretty much secured before that. And it happened with a unique situation that Tennessee was one of the only colleges he could go to and enroll at the midterm with a scholarship open at that time. His other recruiting choices, I think Derek Reese, just really questionable. The kid only averaged nine points a game in high school. I've never heard of a kid getting a high scholarship offer that can only score nine. He was like third on his team in scoring, not at the top in rebounding. And he was like honorable mention all Central Florida. That's not the kind of recruit you want. No. You, know, no. you can 
there's probably 20 players in East Tennessee who could play as well as he did, did that you could have given a scholarship to if you're that desperate to give a scholarship to something. Um, on the upside, UT does now have a win over Kentucky this athletic year. Baseball yeah. team beat Kentucky. Yeah, he was, he was undefeated. You know, I'm, I'm pretty excited about Serrano still. Yeah, he's doing well. There's, there's going to be some growing pain still, but you know, he's a good manager, a good coach, and I expect over the next few years we'll see improvement. As far as basketball and Martin goes, he got a mulligan for this year. With everything he returns, how bad the SEC is in basketball, well, frankly, it's awful outside of Kentucky, and I guess Florida's having a good run of the tournament, but we, for whatever inexplicable reason, always win against Florida. But, you know, Tennessee should probably finish in the top three in the SEC again next year and should win over 20 games and make the NCAA tournament. I would agree. Literally, you return everybody except for Cameron Tatum. Who and and, and, and Swapper Boy. Well, that's who played significant minutes this year. Now, what's the deal on Swapper Boy with this potential fifth year of eligibility? He, he got a medical redshirt because he didn't play very much a couple of years ago because he had an injury. And now, I don't think he'll be back to Tennessee, but... When you're in your, if you graduate, you can go and play for another year at some school if they offer your uh, whatever graduate course you want to take. It's what uh, all the, the center for us last year did, John. Uh, I can't. I can't think of his name either. But that's what he did. He came from. I think he came from College of Charleston, and uh, or one of the Carolina schools, and came in and played his fifth year here while he was in graduate school. That's a new rule they put in. You can transfer over that penalty if you graduate. And frankly, there's nobody I'd rather see go than Woldridge. He is the biggest waste of scholarship, in my opinion, in years. Uh, he did. I don't know, he had some big games. He had like 20 points in the game against Kansas when we beat them while they were number one. I saw worse players come through on scholarship. Sure. And honestly, with the way Martin Chakris looked right now, you may be seeing some more. So Quentin Chavis was pretty terrible this year. He was a reach. I can't imagine that maybe more than even. He may be gone. There's speculation Kenny Hall may not come back because he never played again. But. Um, on the other side of the UT athletic department, the Lady Vols looks like they will be facing Baylor and their giant is Brittany Griner on Monday. Yeah, I expect this to be the end of the road because it's hard to beat the, the, the man child that is Brittany Griner. She is like an owl standing on Carly's shoulders. Except her mustache is much, much thicker than Al's or Carly. But Carly doesn't have one though. So, do you think this is the end of the road for Pat Summit? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, honestly, they said the average lifespan is only two years once you're diagnosed with this. And she's already lived with it a year. But I've still not heard one way or the other. She, she said she was going to retire. But she, they said some people say she's been having second thoughts. I still think that they may be trying to hold out and put Tyler Summon in as coach over there, which would be probably cause the entire staff to quit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't imagine them hanging around. Right. Maybe not. Um, they're all really good, close family, basically. They've been together for 30 years now. This is true. They've been together actually before Tyler. They interviewed him during the game today. He talked about, you know, his memories of cutting down some of her national titles, but not all of them. If they can beat Baylor, that's a huge if because Baylor's so good. It, it would be a fitting way to go out and get them back to another Final Four. And after that, it, it, they will have to give a Herculean effort. In the men's tournament, there's there's still some good teams left in it. I imagine they're all basically good teams at this point. There's still some lower seeds floating around. The big thing about the tournament, the stars have basically aligned for Kentucky to win this. If they don't win it this year, California may as well just never coach in college again. Because you're not going to you're not going to have a better player than they have in uh, Anthony Davis. He's a dominating big man. You're just not going to have a better player than that. Very, very good. I've never found line. myself pulling for North Carolina more in my life at this point. You know, North Carolina point guard broke his wrist, so that that was the only team I thought could compete with Kentucky. And you know they should have beat Kentucky and Lexington this year. At some point, you maybe count on Calipari to pull some boneheaded coach in. Because if, if you can get them in a game where things aren't going their way, he's not going to outcoach the other coach that's left in the tournament. And that's what happened to him against West Virginia last year in the tournament, or a year before last in the tournament, I mean. 
and that's what happened to him against Kansas. He just he never changes his style or adjusts when other coaches do, and it, it costs him games. But he usually can out talent everybody. He's got the, by far the best team. Yeah, I gotta say, I mean, not a Kentucky fan by any means. Davis plays as good a ball as anybody I've seen. Well, and he, he built up his reputation as a shot blocker, and now he gets away with the ball on people and they still call him the ball. So that helps him out a lot, too. But they have other really good players around him. I mean, it, it's, as, it's as good a freshman lead squad as you'll ever see. And they really should win. There's no excuse for them not to win now that Michigan State. I thought Michigan State, with their style of play, maybe I'll slow them down enough to, to beat them. You know, Indiana, they beat Indiana with 12 yesterday, and that game turned into a shootout. It's, it's going to be hard to ever win a shootout. And Louisville, maybe if Louisville can beat Florida. Louisville's playing really good defense right now. Kentucky mauled Louisville and Florida both early in the year. That's the only thing standing in their way of the finals. I would basically. really love, not that I'm, again, not that I'm a Louisville or a Patino fan, I would love to see Patino beat Kentucky. Baylor's got some really good athletes on their team. I don't know if they're good enough to beat Kentucky. No, I mean, frankly, nobody should be good enough to beat Kentucky, except for possibly North Carolina, if their point guard can get his wrist enough to play. So they're, they're, they're the two teams loaded with five-star recruits out there playing in the tournaments. Syracuse has got some good recruits. Syracuse's brackets unfolded pretty easily for them. Wisconsin's always a tough team. But we'll see Kansas. You never know with them. They always have good players, but they're just not quite on the level of number of good players that Kentucky and North Carolina have. Uh, fans, this week we've got a lot of good sports coming up. Um, definitely get out there and support both sets of Diamond Cougars. If you've never been to a track meet, I do recommend you try one at some point. I mean, granted, this week's is at Hardin Valley. That's a little out of the way, but if you're not doing anything next Saturday, it's a good way to kill a Saturday morning. The other big news from sports, I guess, this week was Peyton Manning finally. Yes, let's let's talk about the Denver Broncos for a minute. Well, I saw where they went from I think seventy to one odds for the Super Bowl to eight to one. I mean, you know, you had a, you had a lot of people. I, I still hear a lot of people on Twitter. Hey, just feel so betrayed that he didn't go to the Titans. I, that, that baffles me to no end. I don't know why that would betray if the Titans aren't the Tennessee Volunteers. And I don't know why people would mix the two up. I know there's some people who are probably aren't Titans fans who want to be, you know, you can become Denver fans just as easy they wear orange. Yeah. Um, of course, the other thing the social networks are buzzed with is the fact that Tim Tebow not going to be Denver's quarterback this year. Denver's way better off for it. He, I mean, he, he did some good for him, but like we talked about last year, that defense got no credit whatsoever. Uh, I mean, Tebow's a, not a good player. Joe uh, Namath, I didn't read the whole story. He just ripped the Jets to shreds, though, for trading for Tebow. He said it's a terrible football decision, but designed it to sell tickets. I mean, Tebow's not a good player. He's no, he's not, not set up for the pro level. level. You know, he, he, he was a good college player because he, you can mask mistakes in college. You don't have to do things in college you have to do in the NFL to play quarterback. That's why there's 25 or 30 good college quarterbacks every year and only one or two really good NFL quarterbacks come out of college every three or four years. You, you know what? Honestly, I mean, watching Tebow's style of play, the man should be playing rugby. He would make a great number eight in rugby. I've okay. talked to several people that know the sport. Not millions and millions of dollars to play. That's true. I mean, you know, I don't like Tebow. He's got, he's got people paying him millions of dollars to go out and play for him. You know, Peyton, he's, he's got something he's never had before. A yeah, good defense now. It should be a big thing. Uh, if, if he's healthy, I expect Denver to make it to at least the AFC Championship game. You never know in the playoffs when you're going to run into a hot team. It's like you run into the New York Giants this year, who didn't appear to be the best team in the playoffs, or the best team in the league this year by any means. Over in the NFC, they appeared to be at, at most the third or fourth best team in the NFC. They were hot at the right time. That's what happens in football. Um, Denver's got a good running game. Uh, Denver's solid. Obviously, they've got a very good defense. 
he will make the running game a little better to the extent they need a running game. Their running game is going to become a short passing game. Like he ran the Indianapolis, I think they said that they're they're pretty much willing to put his offense in. Why why wouldn't you be? I mean, I honestly think that's one of the biggest reasons he went. Because they said we will use your offense. Yeah, no, they said that you can pretty much run whatever you want offensively. Well, that's one of the big things that he balked on with San Francisco is that Harbaugh didn't want to give up his offensive system. Man, you know, Manny Tracy pretty much replaced Harbaugh didn't he, in Indianapolis. Yeah, he did. They were terrible. And we've been really good. But I think it'll work out for Denver pretty well. He, he's obviously the biggest name in the sport. Been the best player in the sport. Do you think he's come back player of the year and MVP this year? If he comes back to full health, I'd say he'll be both. He should have been the MVP last year as you saw the value he had for the, the Colts. What was, what was it you, you told me about the Colts, speaking of the Colts' value as a franchise? Earlier this I week, I like to say they were around thirty-five percent less than the average value for an NFL team when Manning got there, and they were about sixty percent higher than the average value for an NFL team when he left. They went up from like three hundred thirty-six million to over eight hundred million in value during his tenure there, and they went from the bottom third of the league to the top third of the league in value. So he made a huge economic impact for them. And another thing. Of course, obviously he'll play half his games in Mile High Stadium or whatever they call Denver Stadium now. I think it's Stapleton, maybe even not that anymore. I can't remember, but that air, he's going to be able to throw the ball further. The big thing will be he's not used to playing out in bad weather and you get snowy games in Denver. But I, he obviously factored everything into it. He, he's very meticulous in what he's doing. Yeah, I, I really, really see at least one more Super Bowl in his future before retirement. But it was 37 and 38 when they won the Super Bowl in Denver. And Manny, Manny turned 36 today, I think. So he's got about three or four good years in it. They, they signed him for five years. I would be surprised if he doesn't play all of them. Like but assuming he's, his arm strength is good. The neck injury, the spinal fusion is not that big of a deal. So the four linebackers play with that injury and play after the surgery. I'm not sure why people think it's just he's going to get hit and his neck's going to fly off. Speaking of his neck injury, Sean Payton out for a year. His defensive coordinator, who's now with the Rams, out indefinitely. That was a bigger penalty that I thought there was going to be handed down for it. I figured he, Sean Payton, would get four to six games and the year long for the uh, defensive coordinator. Defensive coordinator may never coach again. And, you know, a year suspension for the coach is just unheard of, too. Apparently, New Orleans fans are not happy about it. But, you know, that's what you get. Yeah, I mean, that's. I mean, yeah, it's a rough sport, but when you start putting bounties on people for they, illegal hits. They, they violated the entire spirit of the game. And, you know, I would hate to be a Saints player this year. Do you think Drew Lick Breeze leaves this year? Uh, they said that this happening gives him a lot of leverage for whatever he wants to have happen down there. They don't have to give him the whole, they may have to give him more of the franchise like people were saying they were going to do for me. So it's a... Uh, been an interesting week in sports, that's for sure. Um, also, you know, with everything else going on, we have to remember spring practice is right around the corner. Uh, University of Cumberland started this week. It starts Monday. Had a scrimmage today. Monday for Tennessee. So, I mean, there's, we'll have a lot of Tennessee football hopefully to talk about. Uh, one of the things we, about Tennessee football, and I heard this on the radio, it kind of surprised me. Apparently, Derek Dooley apologized to all the players recently for how terribly he's been running the program. So that means he's going to change his style, you think? Apparently he's going to make some changes in how he does things. I mean, I guess it's good that your coach admits that, but it's bad that your coach has to admit that. Yeah. Well, fans, I think that's going to wrap it up for the week. Make sure you go out and support the Cougars this week. Okay. And we'll see you next week. Home softball, home baseball. All of the softball's home Wednesday. Right. So we'll see you then.